Good morning, everyone. It is a beautiful morning here in Tennessee, and I'm gonna go through and water our plants and just go through some daily errands because you leave for a day and suddenly there's a million things to do. So let's get to it. And here we go. It's wonderful to see how big our corn is getting. A lot of it is starting to flower. First time growing corn. Not necessarily sure if we're doing it um, right by conventional standards, but it looks really good. I'm happy a lot of it's flowering already. It means we're actually gonna be getting some corn. The peaches and cream is looking amazing. It's huge. Then back there you see that tall junipero. Excited about that one. Glass gem corn is looking lovely. Wow. It's nice that we're going to have a few waves of corn picking rather than all of it coming at once. <clears throat> On the outer edge, we got our dragon tongue. Got a little shocked from the transplant from moving it over, but I think it's going to do all right. It's going to be okay. <gasps> oh, our black beans started sprouting. Oh my gosh, I can't wait for this arch to fill in. I have such a vision for it. It's gonna happen. The okra is popping. It's looking so lush. <laughs> Seems to be really filling in. Excited to start getting some okra. Ooh. And our potatoes. They seem to have slowed down a bit. I haven't noticed much new growth on them. I'm really waiting for them to flower because potato flowers are so beautiful. But I, th I feel like I've noticed a few of them dying back and I don't know, it might be time to pluck them out soon. But we gonna see. Either way, we gonna get potatoes. I'm really excited for potatoes. We planted a whole bunch of blue potatoes and Yukons too. That'll be a fun harvest. Watering up the swift chard. Oh. A little froggy friend is croaking in the background. I really love watering and making it feel like it's raining for the plants. I feel like they really love that rather than just, you know, aggressively <laughs> showering them, jetting them with water. I think they appreciate this a lot more. It feels more natural. Oh man, and we have so many seeds. I don't even know where to begin. We have all this bok choy. I still don't know what it is. Looks like bok choy, a close relative to bok choy. We have so much of it. I'm waiting for the tips to brown to actually start collecting the seed. And then we also have our red lettuce here that's flowering and seeding too. It's really pretty actually. But I'm excited for that to happen because I'm ready to get this out the way. So this is where we had our old um, broccoli, some cabbage, and our beets too. I actually went ahead and planted some soybeans. I love soybeans. Edamame is my life. Again, being vegetarian, we need to find a lot of supplements for protein, and soybeans are a really great source of it. So we're gonna water her. I just planted them earlier today. It should take about a week for them to germinate. I can't wait. But now what I'm gonna do is actually get this straw. Just sprinkle it on top to protect it from anything that might try and come and eat my beans. My seeds. Uh. 
Fabulous, we're on our way. So with this vlogging, I think it's easier to just go through my routine, my morning routine with you guys, because there's so much happening, it's hard to focus on just one thing. So, oh my goodness, we're gonna check on the eggplant, because for those of you who don't know, we've had a major flea beetle issue. So I've gone through a whole bunch of things, oils, diatomaceous earth, and I've ended up netting them and protecting them and putting uh, fly traps down. And it's actually working. We have some new growth on the eggplant. I am so determined, I'm so determined to get eggplant. And we go ahead. Look at it. So it doesn't like, compared to the old growth, Look at how many holes there are in that. It's tragic, devastating. There's some new growth that doesn't have nearly as much of that on there. Pretty little leaf. Look over here, that leaf looks beautiful. So I'm taking that as a good sign that this is working. Literally just hung some up and just threw them on the ground because they just, the flea beetles just bounce around. Looking really lovely. Look up in here. It's looking good. Ooh. Here we have our sorrel bed. Planted lots of buckwheat around it as well. And as you can see, we got lots of it sprouting. It's looking really pretty. Oh yes, so over here, we also have Malabar spinach, um, and I actually planted some seeds when I planted our transplant Malabar spinach, because given our past experiences, I don't trust transplants too much, so I like to plant seeds alongside too, just in case the transplants don't work out. And what I imagine is going to happen here is the seedlings are gonna grow much quicker than the actual transplant. So, we'll see how that goes. Making it rain on the cave. Make it rain. I love when it rains. Oh, could you see the rainbow? Make a little rainbow up in there. Oh, some rainbow action. Oh, hello, little Winston. Hello, beautiful. Hello. <laughs> oh, okay. Bye. <laughs> so while I'm over here about to water our zucchini rampicante, it's growing up so beautifully. But I did notice on this one, there is a secondary growth going very far to the right and i'm actually thinking i'm gonna cut that growth off so it can focus all its energy on just growing upward i feel like it'll just end up overtaking everything that's going on here so it's gonna feel painful but i know it's for the best it's for the best sorry babe oh well, it's so hard. It's gonna let a lot more light in too. Zucchini is strong. And another update. Um, this zucchini in the center actually, it overgrew and it actually ended up snapping because it bent backwards. But we have a second growth on the side, so I'm hopeful it's gonna get back on track real soon. I think we have some flowers on a few melons, so I'm actually gonna go through and see if I can pollinate any of them. We shall see after watering. Just wanna show y'all how beautiful this melon is doing over here. Oh man, I love how it's raining down, cascading off the side of the bed. It's gorgeous. And I actually did notice some um, female flowers on it. This is a royal golden melon. Let's see if any of them have opened. 
We have an open female flower. I repeat, we have an open female flower. Oh my gosh, it is time to pollinate. So what I'm actually gonna do, get a trusted little Q-tip and find a male flower. Let's see, if any luck with you. Dab you up, come on. Let's get it, anything. Ah, oh, there's no pollen. The struggle to find some pollen is real, but there's actually a flower right behind it. Did not see that, see that before. Let's see. Come on, baby. Give me some juice. Give me some juice. Give me some juice. Oh, we have some pollen. We have a little bit of pollen. Just a tea, teeny itty bit. Now we're going to put it right on. On you. Get it, let's get it. And ideally, I should have probably done this before I watered it, actually. But we got some juice on there. All right. All right. And I'm just gonna continue doing, if I, I'm gonna check on it throughout the day. And if I see any more male flowers open, I'm just gonna keep on pollinating. I'm gonna try and get as many different male flower pollens on there. I'm checking in on these tomatoes, making sure to get nice and low, watering the base of the plant. Don't want to wet them leaves. Oh, just wet a leaf. Don't want no mildew. And a little update on this irrigation, the soaker hose. Um, it's helpful, but honestly, I don't think I'm a huge fan of it. It just kind of lays out throughout the garden. It's not aesthetically pleasing. Chloe. <laughs> and honestly, with the soaker hose, personally, I just really love hand watering and connecting with my plants that way. Um, Soaker hoses can make things much easier, um, especially with time management. You could just like leave it and soaking, but I really love knowing just how much water um, my plants are getting. And again, just connecting with my plants like that and, and giving my plants that nourishment and having it come from my hand just feels a lot more special. Um, so that's my take on the soaker hose. Oh my gosh, the tomatoes are really starting to come in. They're getting so big. I can finally post on Tomato Tuesday. I've been really enjoying having marigolds spread out throughout the garden. They've produced so abundantly, so beautifully. They smell wonderful and they really help keep certain pests away. And if you really want it to continue to produce abundant, abundantly, something that really helps is deadheading them. So, and actually with a lot of annual plants, it really helps to take out those dead flower heads. Maybe I could just use my nail and pluck it out. Because what happens there is it stops using energy to produce seeds in the dead flower head and it refocuses its energy into growing bigger and producing more flowers. So anytime you see some some little dead heads like this one, just get them on out of there. Just just let them go. There's quite a few in this one. Making it rain on onions. Making it rain. Oh, do you see the rainbow? How lovely. Her onions are so happy. One of them flowered. It's so beautiful. Making it rain on our onions. And our peach tree is actually really happy too. It's producing some fruit and it seems to be growing. I fertilized it using um, 
some grass clipping tea I made. I did that about a week ago. I actually haven't checked on the fruit, so this might be a good time for it. Let's see. Oh, here we go. So we actually have some fruit here. Not sure if you can see that well on this. Some fruit here. And it actually looks a little spotty. Hmm. Not sure what that is. Doesn't feel like a good sign. Hmm. Let's do some research. So after a quick Google search, turns out my peaches have a fungus on it. And don't think there's much we can do about it at this point. But that is okay. I mean, we're just gonna have to try again next year. And we do have some other peach trees growing and I don't think they have this fungus. Um, but it's okay, honestly, these trees have gone through a lot this season. We had a very last minute frost and a lot of the fruit that it was bearing ended up falling off. We put it in bird netting and I think that might have been a contributing factor to the fungus because it just like let a lot of that moisture just like sit up in there. Um, but it's our first year growing peaches. I think we're learning a lot this year and hopefully next year we'll grow them better. You know what is growing super well though? Our strawberries. <laughs> it's so nice to go through the garden and just pick them and snack on them throughout the day. Oh, they're so yummy. Oh my God. Oh my God. I need to find a way to grow strawberries year round because they are one of my favorites. Hi baby girl. Hey, no, stay up in there. Ain't time to three round just yet. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Well, I was trying to show y'all the chickens but they ended up just getting out and running all over the place. So I just spent some time wrangling them back in but I'm just gonna leave y'all with that. I hope you have a beautiful day. Sending you all so much love and light. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or any tips on gardening. Take care.